All right. Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, September 21st, 2023 Planning Board meeting. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> <coughs> Introduction to board members. To my left, we have Paul Amatucci, myself, Michael LaRue, uh, Rick Raines, and Les Bodwell. We have Iris Griffith, the Code Enforcement Officer, Terry Wilson, Assistant to Code and Planning, and Lee J. Feldman from SMPDC. Um, before we open up the public hearing, I just want to make a comment that the Beaver Dam Campground public hearing has moved from today to October 5th. Um, so if you're here for the Beaver Dam Campground, I'm sorry, but it will be next meeting. Um, they needed to get some more of their stuff ready. So after that, I'll open up the public hearing for a preliminary plan and conditional use major subdivision Norman Court R44 Lot 20 Civil Consultants. I'm going to recuse myself. Yep. Thank you, Les. Hi there, my name is Neil Raposa, I'm a civil consultant here on behalf of uh, Norman Court LLC. Um, this, I'll just do a, a quick overview. Um, this, this has been in front of the board several times, so uh, there are not any substantial changes to the plan since we last brought it in. Again, we've still just been uh, discussing it with uh, Maine Water um, and still waiting for final comments from Underwood uh, for any additional, um, additional sewer uh, improvements that they'd like to see on the plan. Uh, besides that, uh, this is uh, three building um, with six units apiece, uh, apartment buildings. Uh, involves the improvement of the existing Norman Court uh, to town standards uh, to allow the use of the building for access for the proposed development as well as uh, maintain the use on the remaining lots that are on Norman Court. Uh, and there is one additional uh, single family lot uh, that is proposed uh, closer, to, closer to Old Pine Hill Road. Uh, that's going to be broken off the same the same piece of property. Uh, beyond that, I'm um, open for any questions and okay. hear what the public comment has. Yep. If anyone wants to come up and um, say uh, your, what you have to say, um, just state your name and address, and then you're welcome to it. Okay. Patricia Reynowska, one Hefflinger Lane. Nice Can to you meet you. Name, Patricia Reynowska, R A Y N O W. SKA. I'm concerned about um, basically doing more draw on the town's everything. So I'm nervous. I don't want to be recorded right now, and I know I am. <laughs> um, what about more kids being added to the school system when they're already having issues? Um, also, the drain on the police department, the fire department, water, all that. Don't you feel like we're adding a lot more <laughs> to <laughs> our city when it's not ready yet? That's my concern. Um, and that's really about it. Traffic. Traffic is a big thing. With even the more houses that you put on half a lane coming down and then trying to go to nine. That's a nightmare. Maybe lights need to be put in there. I feel like all the infrastructure that we're doing, it's the city's not catching up fast enough. Does that make sense? So that's concerning. That's really all I have. Okay. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kim Jakes. I live at Three Halflinger Lane. Um, my husband and I built our home six years ago. I must say I'm very disappointed to be speaking at another public hearing that impacts the privacy of my neighborhood. A year and a half ago, I was here speaking on the impact of the extension of Halflinger Lane and the addition of 13 new homes through my front yard and the right of way. Today, I'm here to speak about the impact of the proposed development uh, behind my property. Currently, there's a wood buffer between Halflinger and Norman Court. It's not very dense, but it has provided us with privacy and quiet over the years. As a neighborhood, we were able to enjoy a natural woodland setting with the wildlife that lives there. As I mentioned, the, the wood buffer is not very thick or dense, 
in many areas behind our homes. Once they start clearing, the construction and townhouses will be visible from our development, not to mention the noise from the construction in the 18 units once they are finished. Now that Halflinger is in its final stages, I'm finally able to use my yard again after a year and a half of dirt, mud, noise, trucks, back and forth. The last thing I want to do is to be in my side yard or be on my deck and look, and look at patios, decks, townhouses, and a parking lot through a sparsely wooded buffer. I'm asking the board to consider requiring that a wooden sound barrier or tall wooden fence be erected that would blend into the wood line and minimize the impact, the privacy impact on our cul-de-sac. Hello, my name is Sarah Ellis. I'm an abutter. I live at 98 Old Pine Hill Road. Um, my house and, uh, is right below Lot 1, or just south of Lot 1. Um, and I've walked in through there a lot of times, through Lot 1 and Lot 2. It's really wet. So it's a, it's very, so they're going to be filling in wetland. I mean, so that concerns me that they're filling in so much wet there, wetland there. I'm also concerned about the wetland that's on my property and also the property of these folks here that is down, downhill from uh, where the buildings are going in. And it's our own wetland that has spring peepers in it, irises, all sorts of animals, probably salamanders, but I haven't found any blue spotted. Anyway, um, I'm concerned. I'm not sure how, without all of that era being clear cut, um, runoff is going to be increased greatly from that area, so I'm just wondering. I'm worried about our wetland. Certainly, I did notice in the stormwater management plan that's in, included in the packet, there's a mention of uh, very not. They say not to use pesticides, and I certainly hope that if this is built up, if, if this is built, that the homeowners owners association will um, stick with that agreement to very use minimal pesticides, and um, and also keep the grass cut high, not low, just to minimize. I know there's another culvert going to another wetland, but I'm concerned about this one that isn't even mentioned. It is on all the all the maps, but there's no talk of it. Um, I was happy to see, I believe, and on page, 20, 20, page 121, there's a map that seems to show uh, a tree line. So I'm, I was certainly hoping that they would, if this goes through, that they'll leave the trees or even increase them, as Kim said, to, make a, to keep a barrier between the abutters and this new massive uh, place that's out of character with any other buildings that are here. The three stories, I, I do know there's, a, it says there's a thing that says we're supposed to keep it all and, and make it look like the, fit in with the land and with the area. There are no other three-story townhouses except one other one that he has built, but that was built into a hill, so that's really only two stories above above the street level. These are going to be three stories above street level, perhaps towering over the trees that are even left. I'm not sure about that. But it doesn't seem, it seems out of character with this small, uh, small, quiet, formerly quiet street. Um, one other comment is that I, you did, they're talking about landscaping with native trees. Well, they listed three, one of which is not native. There are no native crab apples. Um, there is a recommend. I have a recommendation that I don't have in front of me of another tree tree that would be a better one if they're if they're going to do that. But don't don't put in non-native ones and call them native. Um, what else were you to read about? So many things. I, I've been away for three weeks and just came back this morning, so I haven't had a chance to go through the through it all. I did have one question. Will there be a, um, a time when we can submit? a deadline for when we can submit more comments if I have more? It depends if the public hearing is closed or open. If it's closed, no. If it's open, yes. Can we, write, can we write appeals a lot? Because I obviously didn't do a very good job presenting yes. my you got to speak on oh. the mic when we talk. So she was asking, or do you want to come up after I finish, I guess? Um, OK, so you'll let us know if there is an option to submit written comments in case we didn't get it all down, down today. Um, I do, I think also that there is a request uh, from another uh, colleague who can't be here um, to m make sure that the, the lighting, the lighting is n night sky friendly. Um, 
that would be, I think, I think there's a mention of it in there, but I didn't get a chance to look at it. But it's just, it's just so, so, so much, so much traffic, people, noise in such a small area. It really feels out of character. And, um, but that's, I guess that's all I have to say right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hang on, hang on, sorry. I got nervous. So the drawer on the school department, the fire department, and the police department, I think that's my biggest concern is that Berwick is growing so quick, which is great, but it's not great if we're not, the infrastructure is not catching up to it. So that's our biggest concern. Um, privacy, obviously, we don't want to have 18 houses behind us with additional kids and families and pets and all that. Um, so is there a way that we can go ahead and write a letter to you? Because my husband also travels, so he can't submit his opinion, and there's other people I know around the area that wanted to sign something about not having this, the other houses on Normandy Court. So usually how that works is if you're going to um, email or write, you do it before the public hearing, so then um, either Irish could read them and okay. then we can still have it. Um, okay, well, this hasn't been approved yet, correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, but there's no more public input after the public hearing is closed. After okay. that, it's just deliberations through the planning board, and that's it. And, Mr. Chairman, yep. I was going to suggest that you probably want to leave this public hearing open yep. to give them opportunity to provide additional written comments okay. for the next meeting. Okay. And then can we also have a petition signed if the people don't want it? Can we have all of them sign? No. no you can't do that. No, no you, you can't. You cannot, um, if it meets all of the requirements of the zoning ordinance, you can't just because you don't want it there, refuse it. That's not part of the ordinance. Okay. I can answer that from our way. Um, my name is Lorraine Cooley, and I'm at 98 Old Pine Hill Road, and I'm on the butter as well. And um, I'm concerned about it. It seems really densely packed into a very small area, and that's very wet, as other people have already said. And um, it seems that it's it's an R. The, the zoning is R2, which doesn't normally allow apartment buildings. Correct. It allows apartment buildings. I'm sorry? It allows apartment apartment buildings. Actually, zoning does? Because yeah. mm -hmm. R2 is like transitioning towards rural right. and not making the, I mean, we, we it's all, transitioning most of from us who. downtown to rural. I'm sorry? It's transitioning from downtown to rural. Right. So we, as you, as people have pointed out, we, many of the neighbors who live there really value the, the we're on the edge of town. There's tons of woods back there. And it's, we don't need to be stuffing it full of apartment buildings that are just squeezed in there. And um, it seems that it's just crowded into a really teeny space. And maybe the justification that is because there's 18 units and it's 18 acres, it's, but it maybe, but plus it's also one house. I don't know how that, the calculation got done to allow that kind of density and the three stories tall. I mean, even the other townhouses on Old Pine Hill Road are two stories tall. They're not three stories tall. It just seems really, and this is a teeny little side, dead end side street that's very wet and wooded, has lots of wildlife, and it just doesn't seem appropriate for this kind of development. And it seems like if 18 units plus the house, it plus all that, pavement for 36 parking places plus making the road twice as wide <laughs> and making a big loop it just seems like that should be counted towards the one it's not really one acre per unit if that's how the math was done I don't know but it seems it doesn't seem like enough it, it just seems like they're just being stuffed in there and it's going to be clear-cut and it doesn't it just does I don't understand the logic behind it so and I'm worried that it'll just be the first of other trying to develop more along that same road and it just it's just a nice little quiet dead-end street I, I just would like to see it stay 
<coughs> quiet and the kind of development that was done on Havlinger Lane is much more peaceful and in, in, in line with the, what the neighborhood is like. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Justin Myers to Norman Court. Um, I just like to say that I have no issue with this. Um, I'm all for people protecting their personal property. However, this is not everybody's property. It's Les's property or the investment group that is behind Les. Uh, understand the easement on my property, 17-ish feet that they're going to be cutting in. Right away laws, got it. Um, that's not technically my property, so I have no problem with them taking that. Um, and uh, I do enjoy having the trees there. I think the wooded buffer should still be a thing. I saw you leave those on uh, Halflinger, uh, so that was pretty nice. That's really all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, if nobody yep. else has anything else to say, we did receive an email that I was asked to read into uh, the record here. Okay. So it says, uh, hello, uh, this is from the Berwick Library Association, by the way. Hello, our board is not available to attend tonight's meeting, but as the butters to the proposed project at R44 Lot 20, we would like to take this opportunity to share our comments. As the town pursues increased density in the neighborhoods surrounding downtown, including increases on Old Pine Hill over the last 15 years, we feel it would be prudent to make improvements to the safety of the road for pedestrians and vehicles. For example, sidewalks, crosswalks, smoother pavement, and reduced speeds. With the entrance to this development directly across from the library entrance, we wonder if it would be a good location to add a four-way stop and crosswalks. The application states that a traffic study isn't needed due to the threshold being 40 spaces, which I'm going to step out of line a little bit here. I think they might have meant trips, not spaces. <coughs> However, it is quite close to 37, which seems to only include one space for a single family lot. So we would suggest that a study may be warranted. Another concern for the library specifically is ensuring the development provides adequate parking for both residents and visitors and allowances for snow removal. The library has experienced issues in the past with similar nearby developments using our lot as overflow parking and interfering with our own snow removal or other operations of the library. And then they said they would appreciate it if we confirm receipt of this message and it has been shared with the planning board as part of the public hearing. Thank you. Signed, Kristen Doloff, President of Berwick Library Association. Okay. <coughs> All right. Well, uh, we will leave the public hearing open. So for the next meeting, was it October 5th? Um, if there's any more co questions or comments, concerns, um, either email Irish or uh, Terry, right, at planning. Okay. So either uh, if you want to send them to me, my email is code at berwickmain.org, and Terry's is planning at berwickmain.org. Okay. And Maine is spelt out for those that haven't had occasion to email anybody. Just as clarification on this, Mr. Chairman, is um, are we leaving this open for public comment during the intervening time, or are we having another public comment just like tonight on October 5th? What, what are we doing? It'll be another one like tonight. Yep. Okay. Just yep. wanted to make that clear in case it wasn't clear to anyone else here. Yep. Uh, it's not just to send in comments, but you may show up again. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, Les, do you want to come back now? Um, I'll open up the first public comment. Um, this is for um, oh. non agenda <laughs> items. <laughs> <laughs> non agenda items. Um, just state name and your comment. If you have one. Okay, uh, seeing no public comment, uh, next is approval of minutes for September 7th, 2023. Um, Les, you weren't here, is that correct? On that? Correct. Okay, so we Can't approve. cannot uh, vote on that, so we'll move that to the next meeting.
here. Yep. Before you get too far down the road, um, even though you're done with the public hearing and you're leaving it open, yep. you might want to just officially lay that application on the table um, okay. until the next meeting. Okay. Um, yep. Just as a process standpoint. Okay. So we should table that. Um, Unless you're not done with it tonight. Uh, well, my thought was if um, we wanted to get the answers that we have now. Sure. And you'll come back to it. Yeah, and then they'll be. Then we'll table it. Yes. Because um, there's not going to be any actions. For Correct. The form to vote on it. Correct. So. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, so next is uh, old business preliminary planning condition of use major subdivision Norman Court uh, 44 lot 20. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a short lived trip. <laughs> All right. Um, again, Neil Raposa, civil consultants. Um, not sure how you want me to proceed. Did you have a list of the items that you yep. thought needed to be addressed? Um, or? So, one of the concerns um, I can state is the concerns of utilities. Um, we get letters from the school, from the police, from the fire, all of them, and the water department, the sewer department. All of them have said that they have. This is in a. Okay, they have plenty of um, resources for this. Um, water says that it's that they have plenty. Same with sewer. Um, then the traffic concerns on traffic. Um. So um, what I would suggest, because there is a section in the ordinance, um, two sections in the ordinance. Um, I wish I had that. I didn't know we were going back to that. Hold on. Um, um, <clears throat> so there's two sections. One says that if I'm going to go backwards. One says that if you have so um, what I would suggest because there is a section in the ordinance, um, two sections in the ordinance. Um, I wish I had that. I didn't know we were going back to that. Hold on. Um, um, <clears throat> so there's two sections. One says that if I'm going to go backwards. One says that if you have less than 40 parking spaces, um, then you, I'm paraphrasing, but then you don't have to do a traffic impact study. So I stand corrected um, on this basis. Mm -hmm. Except that the piece before that one, and I can go back and find it to cite it for you, um, does indicate that you can request, and you probably will want to request, at least for the applicant to provide trip generation information, turning movement counts. It's not a full-blown traffic impact analysis, but it will give you certainly an idea on the number of peak hour trips, peak hour being the heaviest hour in the morning and the heaviest hour at night that would be generated um, by that <coughs> development in that area. Okay. And you can certainly ask the applicant to provide that to you. Okay. Can you say what it was again? The trip generating. Actually, it was provided. Oh, okay. Did, did okay. you provide any? Yep. I'm okay. sorry. I'm I'm pinch hitting to the I know. I, heard. Again, so <laughs> I apologize. Yep. No, we did an initial uh, traffic assessment, and that's basically um, taking the ITE manual yep. and uh, taking whatever uses. With this one, we expanded it, and we used all the uses that are on that road currently, even the, the Gary's, the auto shop, and everything, because we wanted to make sure that we weren't uh, putting. Uh, enough trips on Norman Court that would, it would require a second entrance anywhere. So that was kind of our limiting factor on this project, first you know size-wise to begin with. Uh, so we've we have uh, provided those numbers, and they all do indicate that it doesn't trip the next level of of traffic study. Perfect. All right. Um, next issue was concerns about screening, um, primarily just screening around Haplinger in between this and Haplinger. Um, I guess I'll let you speak to that if you what's what we're willing to do. I think uh, you know that's a pretty standard uh, request is to do screening trees. Um, I'm not a fan of fences, uh, but I'm certainly willing to maintain a wood buffer or if uh, if we clear cut it thin enough that you know it's it's uh, clearly visible, we can we can add some trees in there for screening. I think every one of my projects we've had to do screening. Mm -hmm. So. <coughs> You know, one of the things that uh, on screening less uh, is that I know when we we're we've been talking in the past about like solar and people are having it in their backyard and looking at it. Uh, uh, some some of that screening being evergreen so that the leaves don't fall and then there's no buffer at all. So yeah, that, if, that's if almost have, that's almost the only tree that you would use as an evergreen. Okay, great, great. That you know stays green all year. Okay. 
Next is concerns of wetland impacts. Um, and then the cutting in zones one and two, lot one and two. Yep, um, and I guess uh, to that to that end, we did have um, a wetland scientist and uh, the high intensity soil for a previous development that was coming through. And this was kind of the same approach that was gonna be taken then, except for the fact that uh, we are now proposing to get additional treatment um, at the parking area, putting in a pervious pavement, uh, uh, you know, assembly that is works as kind of a, a filter, so it allows that anything that's uh, any of the pollutants on the on the parking lot, which is kind of your high pollutant area, now that's receiving treatment before it gets into that into that wetland downstream. And that was one of the one of the things. While it wasn't specifically required, we did want to make sure we were taking care of of, of that wetland downstream from uh, from the project. So. I think if I if I could add to that too, I know that uh, a couple of the neighbors. Uh, Express concerns about uh, the wetlands area, I think in here, I think in the things, and uh, about the additional runoff that we, we create. And basically, uh, we treat all of our runoff, mm -hmm. so so none of it is going to impact their their wetlands. Yep. Can you clarify what what treatment means? What treat it with what? Uh, what do we? What we're proposing is a um, is it's a porous pavement. So it's basically. Um, you have a porous asphalt pavement the water runs through instead of running off and then there's a filter material below that which is basically a sand material that gets uh, you know filtered down through and then collected uh, with just conventional under drain pipe uh, and then that is what's released into the wetland so it's been treated from all the um, any pollutants that we or the majority of the pollutants that are on on the pavement as well as it also gets cooled so you don't have the hot that you know, hot runoff coming off that uh, that parking lot, it cools down to an ambient temperature, and then it's released into the wetland, so it's not it's not a shock to the system. Okay. Um, and the um, what was it? Lot one and two. They said about the um, the wetlands, but I don't see any wetlands. It's on the, that. and what it was basically determined. Um, during the study is that uh, this portion here uh, where that's the outlet of that existing culvert comes through yeah uh, it's a drainage swale here that's always uh, backed up at the at kind of the berm area in half layer yeah. and that was also if you'll remember from that I'm not sure if, if you're familiar with that or not but there are twin you know 30 inch pipes very large pipes that cut through the uh, through the cul-de-sac there so there is quite a bit of water that makes it to that point uh, and part of this project is uh, we're widening the uh, the culvert that exists at Norman Court because there's such a large amount of water coming through there. Currently, it's not adequately sized, so we're actually we're trying to improve the the situation on both sides of on both sides of the street at this point. Uh, and it does it is going to require some filling of uh, one one wetland that's an isolated wetland that was uh, basically created. With the uh, with the development when Norman Court was originally originally constructed, uh, and that was evaluated to make sure it wasn't a vernal pool or anything like that. So that's that is the actually the only wetland that's classified as wetland that's going to be impacted. It's about 600 square feet. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to add on to that um, for clarification purposes for folks um, <clears throat> on the wetland on the wet, identified wetland areas. Um, the applicant is allowed to fill up to 4,300 square feet with just paperwork that they submit to DEP. Um, they don't have to get into any kind of impacts until they get beyond 4,300 square feet. And also, it's just the idea of understanding that wet land doesn't necessarily mean that it is a wetland. It has to have certain vegetation and certain soil types in order to qualify as a wetland um, versus wet land. So I just want to um, okay. clarify that as well for the board. Thank you. Um, next was pesticides. You said in the HOA that you'd have uh, limited pesticides. Um, just, um, next is concerns about three-story buildings. Um, if, I, yep. if I may, Mr. Chair, yep. um, the town does have an ordinance that restricts the height of buildings to 35 feet. We don't restrict number of stories. Mm -hmm. We restrict building height from grade. So that, you know, shouldn't become an issue. And this building, these buildings will be 
if they Correct. submit a permit that is for a building that is higher than 35 feet, I have to deny it. And if they build it and it goes above 35 feet, they have to fix it. Okay. Um, next is concerns about crab apple trees. Um, as you were saying, though, you're, you're thinking more of evergreens to put in there. Yeah, and those, and I think th those were just on um, the front landscaping and okay. going through there. And that was not for screening. Yeah, no. What I what I basically I generally do is I'll look at the at the DEP list of <coughs> of, uh, of approved plants and go from there. But I don't think we're we have our hearts set on any you know, specific okay. uh, crab apple trees. Um, the dark sky friendly. We have an ordinance about that, so they have to they have to be dark sky friendly compliant lighting for exterior lighting. Um, concerns about the density, how everything is so close. Um, I mean, that's for this particular project. The the closeness of everything here was really just trying to minimize the environmental impact and and keep everything keep everything consolidated. It was a conscious effort. Um, and as far as the density goes, it's it's uh, well well under uh, the density requirements. There there technically could be you know, up to forty five um, up to forty five units with the, the area density we have, but it would just require <laughs> other things to be put into place that the site really doesn't lend itself to multiple exits, things like that. So uh, we got to the maximum of what we could do uh, with the with the least amount of impact. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, the library just said they had concerns of traffic, but um, we already discussed that. And as far as the snow removal goes, uh, we have tried to tried to leave a portion uh, of this open area here. That's uh, currently that's kind of where that field is, just beyond the, the telephone. I mean, the, the utility pole when you're out there, uh, and that is kind of the intended spot to get uh, the majority of the snow from the site. Uh, plowed down the road and onto that onto that location. So, okay, I, I can speak more specifically to that uh, library issue. Uh, the library issue stemmed from uh, my other buildings across the street. When I was removing the snow, people would go park in the library parking lot, and that would cause a problem for the library because the library is trying to get their parking lot cleared as well. So, you know, we've instructed all of our, our tenants not to do that anymore. I mean, that was a couple of years ago. I don't think they've done it. Okay. in the last couple of years. But I think that's specifically what the library was concerned about. And in this case, uh, because we have so much land here, and this road, even though we're only going to pave the road to here, you know, there's another 500 feet of road with a big open area up there. So that would be my intent, would be to clear a spot up there that people can just go park their car up there while I clear the parking lot for the 10 or 15 minutes it takes me, and then they can get back there. Thank you. Um, nope. Thank you. Um, does Lee J or Irish have any? Of questions? course, I always have. I okay. always have things to say. Um, I also think it's important um, to understand, as you board members um, probably do know, that um, there's potential for the board to consider offsite impacts as well, and um, looking at crosswalks or looking at. Um, sidewalks or things of that sort in that area and that certainly is something that we would take into consideration as um, as you work through this process and make recommendations as to um, potential conditions for offsite impacts for the applicant to um, be prepared for as well sure. and I do want to add that I did speak with James um, on that aspect a little bit earlier um, because he was aware of this email uh, and he said that it was something that we could possibly see about. Um, I wasn't clear because I was he was heading out and I was heading in, but whether he meant for the applicant or for the town to possibly see with DOT if there was any uh, to take a, if the DOT could take a look at it and see if they felt comfortable with there being stop signs or slowing measures out there. But that would have to be a DOT decision, mm -hmm. not a applicant um, decision, from what I understand. If it's possible for a crosswalk there, that would slow down people. Right, a crosswalk from there to the library. Certainly, it creates a visual <laughs> presence right. um, in that area. Yeah. I play Frogger 50 times a day out here. I'm not the person <laughs> you want to ask. <laughs> well, what you're supposed to do and what some people do, it's not hand in hand. But um, Are you, are you uh, amenable, sir, to having a DOT? 
review done to see if those things are um, are important for that area due to the increase in in units and traffic and and people. I Mr. to be Chair. honest, it's it, this is one of those situations where it's that if the town is looking to have improvements done, and the town came to us, you know, looking to work with us, I think that'd be a situation that'd be you know more amenable than us trying to track it down and, and see what the town needs for it. We're trying to keep uh, keep our impact to what, we, what we're producing here. Right. So. Okay. Okay. Lee J. So one of the things that's probably the best kept secret, I don't mean that literally, but um, <clears throat> um, our organization um, works very closely with the main DOT. In fact, you are a, um, I believe you are a CACS, um, Kittery Area Transportation S Service um, Municipality. And that means you're in the urbanized area down here in the southern part of the state. So um, we run the CACS operation, um, and I can have our staff um, who interface with DOT on a regular basis um, take a look at that and see if that is something that um, um, can be accomplished on Old Pine okay. Hill Road. Okay. So they don't have to go directly to DOT. You don't right. have to. Right. We can we can interface. Okay. On that. Yeah, that'd be great. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all I have. Did you guys have anything else? Okay. Or? I covered everything on my list. Yeah, you covered everything on my list too. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Next is uh, new business, conditional use, and site plan review. Berwick One Solar R62 Lot Five Dash One. Berwick one solar. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ninety three went. I don't call oh. Berwick one solar, but uh, they do. <laughs> 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 Good evening. Uh, I'm Jeff Oliva with Civil Consultants here representing the property owners and the proposed uh, solar developer for this project. I came to you guys about mm, four or five months ago to start the process and we had scheduled a site walk. I canceled the site walk because the develop, solar developer that we were working with, um, Aegis, was in the transition and was bought by Correlate which is basically the same people, uh, just a different name, uh, that is working with the development. The plans have stayed the same, uh, no changes, still one megawatt uh, proposed uh, layout, uh, same location. Like as I mentioned, the design has not changed since then. And I guess what I'm looking to do tonight is start this process back up again uh, with hopefully scheduling a site walk and then uh, moving forward after that through the uh, public hearing process. Okay. And the o only change on the um, plans is really just indicating the correction for the right address and also just changing it to the um, to correlate as one of the leaseholders. Okay. And then also, as mentioned before, is to as um, group into this. This has been probably has been a long term gravel pit for many many years um, without a permit. And now since we're here doing the the solar aspect of it the conditional use uh, lumping in the mineral extraction portion of it as well okay mr. chair yes. just just to clarify um, just because you guys were not privy to this he just stated that the address change um, previous owners had told him it was 95 because that was the nearest address um, although our town's addressing ordinance requires any lot that has a parcel on it to be given up uh, 
structure on it to be given an address. The garage, uh, storage garage on the site was never actually given an address. So, um, so I provided him with the, the actual address that per our, or, our addressing ordinance, and that's the change in the address. Yeah, the original address was incorrect. Yeah, originally okay. I had it labeled as 95, Wentworth, and it's 93. Okay. So what what is the visibility of this site yeah. from, from roads going? Um, I don't think you're going to see anything from the, from the road as you go down Wentworth Road, you back into it. Um, if you look at way the, the, the topography and the way you come into it, um, the road is a little high. You come in through the dirt road, comes down, you cross the brook, and then you go into the um, gravel pit area. Um, like we talked about at the meeting, uh, when we stake it out, I think you'll be able to see what's going, what that looks like. And, and there's a, a lot, of, even though they logged the property um, a while ago, there's still plenty of trees that you won't be able to see in, and see the array from the road. Very highly doubt that you'll see that. And from abutters? From abutters, there's really, um, th there's some abutters that are um, on the, uh, we're gonna look, let me look at my map so I get my north-south correct. Uh, I'm gonna call it the east side along near the North Berwick line. Um, they may see, uh, there's a little bit area on there, but it's, pr it's pretty much wooded. Um, as we work towards the north, uh, in the northwest, there's nothing on, the, on that side. Uh, most of the houses are along Went Wentworth Road in that area. Um, there's one house that even as you turn in on the driveway, right on the abutter, that shares that easement through that uh, section, um, it'd, be, it'd be tough for you to see the <coughs> gravel pit from there. In fact, you are in the barn on that side. And when we go to the, the site walk, it's the it's the barn that has the American flag on the side of it. You'll see there's a driveway right to the mm -hmm. left of it, yep. and just carry that straight back. Okay, I'm I'm pretty familiar with this property. I uh, I looked at buying this property years ago, and uh, I, I think he's correct. I mean, I, I I would be surprised if you could see any of it from the road, depending on the exact location. But I know exactly what you're talking about. I've been in that gravel pit, and uh, yeah, you get on in there little ways if you're talking about where the gravel pit is yeah that's that's where the array as you come in the gravel pit on the left hand side are these solar panels uh, fixed in position or are they move or the ones that rotate according to where the I sun believe is? these are the ones that they don't rot they don't spin but uh, they turn they will okay they'll turn they they'll move pivot. that way yeah, yeah they yeah. pivot that way yeah okay so they, so they are jacked up a little bit. They are higher, more yes. than the older yeah. style. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. And then um, the inactive gravel pits. It looks like there's two up in the northern part. Yeah, some of so those are going to pretty much Stay be adjusted inactive. a little bit with the grading that has to happen to set the solar panels. Um, those on that northwestern side yeah. are going to be kind of abandoned and okay. as they are, okay. as they have been. Yeah. Most of the activity now is on the southern side, okay. and that's where we're going to um, get that part permitted and work off of that. Okay. Right now, the open area is under the DEP regulations, but what we're going to do is do the notice of intent to comply just to get everything organized to get it all under, up to snuff with as part of DEP permitting. Okay. I had a small question about the gravel pits as well. Um, being that it looks like you're going to extend the perimeter of where the gravel pits can go to, will there be an increase in the use of the gravel pit extraction um, from what you currently kind of have going on now? Currently, no. The, the intent here is to still have the same um, operator, and he has a small operation to go in there and, and use that. The property owners who still want to continue working with them and as they go through that way. Um, if it does change, um, there could be, there would be an, obviously an increase in, in truck traffic, but I don't think that there is, um, I, I think it's more of, this is more of a situation of the usage comes and goes in flurries. Like sometimes I need to get all that, I need that sand, so I'm gonna grab it and use it. Otherwise it's, I think, it I think it's pretty much an individual, right? Pit, right, I don't think it's really a commercial. Pit. It's not Anyone a commercial. Yeah, no. It's, yeah, it's not open to the public. It's it's so you're not, really you're, right your now. Your intention is not to become pike size. No, absolutely no. Okay. There's not enough area there. I mean, there, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of acreage, but as far as material goes, there's 
it's kind of one of those ones where you're still going to pick at it. I think a lot of this has already been removed and we're driving over it on Route 4 because that's the, the history is that this area was that gravel was used to, to construct Route 4 running from South Berwick to North Berwick along that right. side. Um, I guess my question is, is you're, that re requires a conditional use if we're updating that. Yeah. At that point, it could increase the traffic. I mean, it could, yes. I mean, per, we have information per, there. Right. Per, per their approval, yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. But right now, it's, you know, it's been a gravel it's pit. In, it's been yeah. a gravel pit since the 50s. Right. right. And um, now it's just, now it's, uh, we're adding a use with the solar. And updating let's get that. Let's update yeah. this use and get it under compliance. Okay. So just for clarity, so you're looking for uh, approvals. I mean, you're looking to apply for a solar farm and get the gravel pit approved? Correct. Or reapproved? Well, approved because there, it's it's aged such that it doesn't have an approval. It never came to a board of any any kind. Okay. It's just been a gravel pit. You look at the old USGS maps and they're in the applications, and those were generated in the early 60s right on the properties to, you know, a pickaxe and it says gravel pit. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, I, it's, it's one of those things that just getting everything under order now under current zoning. We couldn't go in there and just do the solar without having to take care of the mineral effect. Okay. Um, yes, please. Uh, Jeff, is there, is there a name for that pit? Um, is it, is it uh, I don't know, like uh, the MCC pit or perhaps Mayberry pit? No, on your, on your list there, no, it's, there's no it's name It's not listed no, here. No, it's not listed on Okay. There. Nope. All right, thank you. Yep. <laughs> Glad you knew exactly what I was yeah. going for. Lee J, do you have anything? Uh, <coughs> excuse me, yes. Um, so, Greg, on the pit, um, I know Greg. it seems to be a yeah. small operation yeah. right now. Greg. I said Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I said Greg. <laughs> <laughs> on the pit. <laughs> um, any um, portable crushers in there? Any processing going to happen in there? I, right now they do a little bit of processing and in, uh, in, in crushing in there. I think it's one of those situations where they do it as needed um, and that would continue. Okay. I'm meeting with them next week to kind of go over and get a better feel about their, uh, if anything's changed since the last time. I met with them earlier and it was just, it's, a, it's a currently a small operation. Um, and the intent is it to stay that way, but it not it's not always it doesn't have to. What about a reclamation plan? Um, yes, we have part information in there. We have details on our plans about what needs to happen for that reclamation, wh when they need to do it, when they hit certain areas, and when they have to start working through that. Okay, I, I think one of the things, if I can just comment on that, I, I may be speaking out of turn, but uh, th this is a gravel pit and not a quarry. So it's a big difference, you know, a quarry is where they, they blast the quarry, they blast the granite, and they crush it. So everything is crushed. From my remembrance, when I was in there, it's a gravel pit, so it's just screening material. Completely different animal versus... Oh, crushed. I understand, Les. I've been working on one for over a year yeah. now in one uh -huh. town, if you'd like to join me up there. <laughs> and and they, may, they may crush rocks once they have a big pile of them. But my, my guess is that the you know the ordinary operation is a little bit of screening and not crushing. Yeah. As a general rule. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So um, when you go to the, when you get a chance to get in the plans, L three has a reclamation notes on them okay. for that. Again, I'm just holding yep. down the form. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Information there on the top left. As with, it seems, a lot of solar projects lately, um, being kind of new to the planning board myself, I'm trying to learn as I go, so if uh, my question is silly, forgive me, but um, in your plan, do you have um, finances set aside or planned for the decommission of the solar panels? Yeah, so as part of the, the any kind of solar project that goes in the main, they have to set up a, a decommissioning plan that has to, get be, has to be approved by DEP. And that has um, information about what they need to provide for a bond for um, 20 years down the road whenever they need to, to do that. So 
um, as part of the process, they need to submit all their information, get their DEP decommissioning approved. Once we get that, then we'll submit that to the town, and that goes along with that aspect of it. Okay. So there, there is. It's a state side of permitting that that commit that handles the decommissioning and the bond that they need to put in place to cover that. Well, that takes it out of our hands, which is good. Mm -hmm. Well, a actually, what's happened in the past with us in Berwick when we've approved these things is we also have a review during that period of time to make sure that the uh, the bond is still sufficient after inflation, et cetera, yep. and, uh, and, and maybe other uh, regulations that come into play so that it can be decommissioned entirely in property. Yeah, and I and I think if I if I I don't know all of it, but if I look at the history of what when solar started to what it is now, I think the DEP is really caught on and really has that kind of uh, infl in inflation aspect of it to know, you know, you know, twenty years down the road, the cost is not going to be the same as it is today, and to, and to look at that part of it. And so I think these, these solid state panels are thirty to fifty year panels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that whole um, decommissioning process is run by the state, and, and they they look at that. I provided information in <coughs> the package about what the their kind of first pass is. And with that, I'm sure DEP will have comments. Um, we kind of stay out of that part. Let them handle their that part. So Jeff, without without me digging through this. Is part of that decommissioning plan to uh, flatten and put solar panels on the on the area that they they mined out? Um, yes. Uh, no, that's not the decommissioning plan. Decommissioning plan would be sorry. Would done I, I meant the reclamation go. plan. No. Okay. No, the reclamation plan is um, the reclamation is is kind of separate. You've got the decommissioning for the solar that handles thirty year, twenty years down the road. It goes belly up and then nobody wants to do it that what it takes to rip that out and then plant the area back <coughs> um, when we talk about gravel pits in the reclamation once they're at a large enough area before they start excavating into new space they have to spread topsoil and plant behind them because they can only have a certain amount of area open um, when we look at what's going to happen where the solar panels are going to go there's grading that needs to happen because they need to have that kind of transition to be a little bit um, smoother than it is now. So we're putting the solar panel over a bunch of the old excavation areas. They're going to have to smooth out some of those spaces to make that work for the panels because they can't be all j jagged They're the way they have the um, the pylons go in and the posts go in right. to support the, the solar panels. That, that's what I was hoping because yeah. I was like, you know, I, I see these these mine sites, you know, where where they just, you know, dig big holes and yeah. I'm like, you know, gee, uh, putting putting a bunch of solar panels in a spot like that seems like a good yeah. a good use of that space yeah. at that point, yeah. you know. Yeah, so we've got that area. They do need to do grading and push stuff around and the way we've situated it is that there's an excess of material so that they can sell that gravel and their work when they're doing the grading for solar panels, they've got they're going to be able to use some of that material as well. Okay. Um, so, last time we found your found this complete, and then we scheduled the site walk. But since things have changed, do we have to find this complete again? <coughs> the only thing that's changed is the is own, is the entity. one um, entity and the address. So. so no, um, no, you don't have it, to do it's that. It's already complete, and yep. then we already voted on the, the waiver. Yep. Uh, for for uh, landscaping. Yeah, 9.8.f.2.b.vi. The landscape plan showing location type and approximate size of plantings and location and dimensions of all events in its training. So that one was waived. Um, I guess next would be to schedule the site walk again and the public hearing. Correct. Um, October 5th, there's already two public hearings that day, um, so possibly it would be the meeting after that. Okay. 19th. The 19th. And then the site walk 
could be on the fourth or fifth. Does that work? The that works. You tell me what time, and I'll make sure that um, I'm, I'm there, and that we'll have um, we'll have um, some great stakes out there, just to indicate. It's a big area. It's five area. acres of, of yeah. area, but we'll be able to give an indication about where we're at. Okay. Um, five five thirty. Works for me. Whatever, whatever works for you guys. Like five, um, it's a five better okay. Yeah, five. Yeah. Five. Yep. yep. And it's a big it's area to yep. walk around yep. if we want to look. Yep. yep. What time? Do, time to when do we show. change clocks? Uh, I don't know. Do we? Yeah. Even, yeah do we okay. even need to now? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do we get to play in the bulldozer? I, I hope so. <laughs> awesome. All right. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Excuse me, Chairman. <coughs> I'm not sure we have enough time to notice for October 5th uh, to send out a butter's notices. For the October sidewalk? For the sidewalk, rather. Okay. Um, uh, Jeff. Dave? Yeah, that's right. Um, well, then that would be the 19th. Hold on one second. Okay. We're Hold just on. looking at the calendar. Uh, so if they went out on Monday. Wait. Um, So, so would something that was going to come up in informational items. So we'll, we'll just leave it at this. I have something on the schedule for the twelfth, and that's going to involve the board all getting together. Would that be a good time for that? Gives the us the extra time that we need for okay. the. Would that be all right with you, Jeff? Oh, it's fine with me. Okay. Yep. And what? Uh, what time? Yep. Same time. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Okay. Same time, same channel. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Jeff. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. <coughs> Thank you. Can you wait for me? Because it's just open stuff. Yep. Yep. All right. So, second public comment. Um, this is open to any resident for non-agenda items. All right, I'll close that. Next is informational items. <coughs> okay, so um, just real quick, uh, we did set the dates for the workshops that we that had been we had been emailing about. So on the twenty eighth, we would like to sit down and have <coughs> all the board members watch the uh, main municipal video and then on the 12th uh, we have confirmation from both Lee J and Phil Saucier the town's attorney that they will be able to uh, be available to present for the boards to talk to you guys answer questions mm -hmm. all of that so that this is all procedural workshops so um, we do have a time set of what did we say? six, six o'clock on the 12th yeah. And that email will go out. That was just confirmed right before this meeting. Um, I just need to know what time you guys would like to do on the 28th. We chose dates in between meetings. How, how long is the video? About an hour and a half, I believe. Um, do you want to start it at 6, 6 to 7.30? What did you say? I said, I'm excited. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly that's what, what you didn't say. <laughs> I don't yeah. even eat popcorn. Um, well, six wouldn't be bad. Okay. You want to do, do six o'clock? If we do six o'clock, that gets you all home a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. I think that's all I. What was the time on the twelfth? Uh, we're going to uh, do the six at, yeah. at then too. Yeah. yeah. You have a five o'clock site walk. Yes. Though, right. Yes, we have five p.m. site walk, and we'll make sure we include that in the emails. Okay. And uh, we can all head back here afterwards after we get our liquid timers. Awesome. Any other informational items? Uh, the only reason I'm sitting in, I don't know how much you were you were told, but the only reason I'm sitting in tonight is Hannah is on her honeymoon. She got married this past oh, weekend. Nice. Oh, nice. So, Congratulations. Uh, hopefully she'll be back and settled and ready to get back at it next week. Awesome. Great. Awesome. I have a birthday in two days. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I don't think we really have a whole lot for you guys tonight. 
No. I just have a question for Lee Jay um, regarding when we continue with the uh, public hearings yes. and notifying uh, uh, neighbors of this. So it's an interesting question. Um, there's there's um, what you required to do by law, and there's what you may want to do as courtesy. Um, by law, once you notify the abutters of a public hearing, it's their responsibility to continue to follow that project and make sure that they're back on the agenda for a certain meeting to be able to follow it. Courtesy, if you chose to do it, would be to send out another notification or post it. Well, you have to post it anyway, but send out another notification to the abutters of when the next public hearing is coming. But um, by law, you only need to do that once, and then it's the abutter's responsibility to follow that process. So we send out our original abutter's notices per, you know, with, with yes. certified and regular mail. Yep. So would just a, a regular mail You could do it follow if you wanted to regular rather mail. Than that, rather than the two, we don't need to do both. Correct. Follow up. Okay. Yep. <coughs> I do have a, an informational ask, I guess. Um, it, it seems like, in, and I don't, I guess, Terry, this is sort of t for you, um, but it seems like minutes are, they come in at different times for meetings past. Sometimes they'll be on the website right away, other times it's not until, uh, well, for example, tonight, this is my first eyes on these minutes for September 7th, I believe. That was sent to me. It okay. Was, it was okay, sent like, about a week ago. Uh, okay. Maybe at the I beginning. Think it was maybe earlier, I didn't get it. The earliest part of this week. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. But maybe I didn't get it. Um, but as a rule, what what is our timeline for how the minutes come in after a, a planned planning board meeting? There's there is no rule. There is no rule. No. Okay. Yeah. Just whenever they get done, they get processed and okay. it doesn't done. it doesn't always fall in the highest priority category. Right. 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 Okay. Thank you. It rarely falls in the highest yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. That's the last it thing never. on the totem pole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We're, we're, we were discussing that prior to the meeting with Lee Jay on how to best do the minutes because it just becomes a little um, arduous. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I was going to say tedious, but I think yeah. this is nicer. I mean, if you look at some of the meetings we've had, well, if you that have to have been, go through a two-hour meeting, I mean, if you're watching it again, two isn't bad. Some <laughs> of our meetings have been three hours. Hey, we try to limit yeah. it See, now. Paul's got the eyes. He knows. <laughs> some of them have been three-hour meetings, yes. and it's a lot to yes, cover. It is. And yes. so. one one thing. Uh, but it's okay because we get paid overtime for that. <laughs> yeah, we'll put a little extra air in your pay envelope yeah. this week, Paul, yeah. just for that. We're going to try to streamline the minutes because uh, they're too long, they're too wordy, everything's mm -hmm. online. So mm -hmm. going forward, we're going to streamline them and so hopefully we can reduce them quicker. Nice. Just some light summarizing. Yes. Yeah, yes. and okay. I think that that's fine. I, I think you're right. I think that to try and recap it in word form, for the entire thing, I mean, people can watch it yes. on replay over and over again if they really want to know the details. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. just weren't sure what was required, so Lee J clarified that for us nice. and, and awesome. helped Thank us uh, work that out to streamline it significantly. Yep. So, good timing on the question. <laughs> it was a plant, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, the only other thing I do want to say in regards to informational stuff is, is I want to remind you guys that when uh, leading up to these two uh, workshop dates. Uh, first of all, for those at home, they're workshops, so they won't be televised, um, especially the MMA one because that one would get me arrested because I'm not allowed to mass broadcast that. I can show it to a group in there, but not mass broadcast. So we're going to skip that. But uh, if you write down any questions you may have in regards to procedure, how any of that goes, again, like I said in my email, write them out. If they get answered during the workshop, the, during the video workshop, great. That video workshop may bring up more questions for you. Write them down so that we can, and if you can get them to Terry or I earlier before we meet on the 12th with Lee J and Phil so that they know kind of what areas the board may be looking for more clarification on, uh, that would be very helpful and, and help streamline everybody's time. That's all I have. Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, 
Seeing nothing else, I will make a motion that we adjourn. I'll second, second that. Okay. <laughs> All in favor. All right. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>